Grace and peace to you all. This is Pastor Pimpong. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Today is the fourth day of the 10th month of the year 2019. Gradually we are, you know, inching towards the end of the year 2019 and we find ourselves in 2020. But by the grace of God, here we are. You know, we are alive. You know, the sun is overhead today. A little hot, but we thank God for the great, for the grace he has given that I am able to walk and you over there, you are also alive, breathing. You know, we give God the glory, he deserves it all. Today is the 277th day of the year 2019, 277 day. So you see how God has, you know, uh, by grace carried you and I on his wings like an eagle with no charge. You know, are we going to charge God uh, for anything? What can we charge him for? He has been a blessing to us in every way. So let's surrender our lives to him. If you don't know him and if you know him, deep yourself more and more in him. Spend quality time with him, love him because he loves you and I, okay? My beloved, I want to share with you and I something from the book of Ezra. Ezra, the book of Ezra, oh, so wonderful. In Ezra chapter eight, now, in Ezra, the children of God, the children of Israel, here they are in exile in Babylon, and by the grace of God, a prophecy that Jeremiah gave, that at the end of 70 years, you know, they will be restored, and. It did, it did happen that Cyrus, who had taken over as king, made a proclamation that God has spoken to him that uh, he should build him a temple in Jerusalem. He should build him a temple and that if any who God's spirit, if the Lord stirs him up, should go. So the children of Israel, most of them went to start this building, you know, and as they constructed, in between, the, the enemies came against them, tried to uh, stop the project. But at every instance, God has moved, moved in their behalf. And the final one was when, in fact, they had to stop the work. But the prophet Haggai, you know, Haggai prophesied, you know, and said, look, the Lord said we should rebuild. So they started building and then request was an inquiry was sent to the king who has taken over from cyrus his name is darius and darius made a search and he found amongst the things in the in a locker somewhere you know a proclamation by cyrus so when that was found he sent to those who came who were coming to report and complain against the children of Israel to try to stop the work. He told them to go back you know, and, and tell them to continue building. And then he told the enemies uh, to provide them everything that they needed and to help them build. Listen, God, God is able to fight for you and I. God always fights for you and I. I'm not, I, if I say he's able, it's an understatement. God always fights, fights for those who rely wholly on him. The Bible says in the book of Chronicles, Second Chronicles chapter 7 says, the eyes of the Lord run through and fro the whole earth, you know, beholding the deeds of many and showing himself strong in the in the, on the behalf of those who love and fear him. So my friend, if you love and fear God and reverence God, listen, hold tight. Don't relent. Continue to fear and reverence him because God is always fighting for you. He's every day fighting for you. He's always fighting for you. Even when it feels like your back is to the wall, God is, has not moved away from you. He's right there. My beloved, he's right there. So now let's continue the story. So here you have uh, a proclamation was made and then now the people are building in Jerusalem and there were some remnants left among the remnants was a man by name Ezra and the Bible says that Ezra had prepared his heart he had prepared his heart in the things of God both to do and to also teach others 
it was this Ezra whom the king Darius, you know, called and assigned. He said he should go Jerusalem, go and teach the people the ways of God. Can you imagine that? You know, here is uh, Darius who is not a Jew. He is not a Jew, and by that we can tell that he doesn't worship the God of Israel. And yet, God placed in his heart, and he sent Ezra. And Ezra wouldn't go alone. Ezra gathered some other people, many who were willing to go with him. So they took off. And Ezra, meanwhile, had told the king that God's presence and God's hands is with those people who fear him and is able to deliver and supply every need of their, their, every need of theirs and that God's hands were against those people was against those people who who object to God and rebel against God so I believe this man Ezra has really been talking to the king so the king knew Ezra and the king heard and knew the God of Ezra how he's able to work do things for the God for Ezra so Ezra and his people. So here Ezra, the Bible says, Ezra gathered the people all the way, all of them, by the river called, river that flows into Ahava, a canal. It flows into a place called Ahava. So we call it the river Ahava. The river Ahava. So they gathered there. And why is there? He said he looked amongst the people. He counted, he counted everybody. And he saw that there were no sons of Levi's amongst them. So he sent to go and bring sons of Levi. And they came. And he says, I love what he said at the verse 18. He says, and by the hands of God, or by the grace of God, by the good hand of God, we found a man who was wise, knowledgeable of the things of God amongst the children of Levi. So they all came. And then he says, down we proclaim. He said, I proclaim a fast by the river Ahava. I proclaim a fast. And what was the reason for the fast? To seek the face of God, to seek direction from God. Note that he was not asking God for material things. No, he will seek, he sought the face of God for direction. My beloved, when was the last time that you proclaimed the fast to seek for God's face for direction? Too often when we are fasting, we want money, we want this, we want that, we want a husband, we want this. But when have you really sought the face of God for direction? Direction in this life, how to conduct your life that will be well pleasing to God. When Ezra sought the face of God, he says, so that for God to show them, to direct, to order their footsteps. And he said, because the reason being that he is ashamed to ask for protection from the king because he had already told the king that God was well able to protect and to guide them and to supply them their every need. You know, everyone who relies of God on God, God protects them and protects them. So Ezra was convinced of that. And because of that, and he also knew how to approach God through fasting and through prayer. No, no, not through seed sowing, not through money that you are giving to somebody, but through fasting and prayer. My beloved, I am, I believe God wants us to learn something here. In this last days when too many of us have been taught to think that before God can do something for you, you have to pay some money. You have to give it to some prophet or some bishop or some apostle somewhere. Ezra, by the grace of God, is teaching us the better way. Is that if, What he's saying is that you alone by yourself can... I'm not saying that dissociate yourself from the assembly of believers, no. But I'm talking about the fact that when your back is to the wall, that is where you should know how to seek the face of God. For the Bible says, Jesus even say, said this, he says, the this kind cannot come out except through fasting and prayer which means that there is there is there is some power there is something benefit a great benefit in fasting i know it for myself you know in the book of isaiah 58 we are told about fasting and how it is that when you fast and when it is done properly i'm not talking about the fasting that you do, be doing and then you put it on youtube and say i'm before i'm fasting no i'm fasting 50 days no 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 when you are fasting nobody has to know it is between you and God. If you have a, a corporate, a corporate fasting, yeah, 
at the whole congregation, you all know that you are fasting. But it's not something to be broadcasted to the whole world to know that you are fasting. No, no, no. no. You see that in Matthew chapter chapter seven, Matthew chapter six and chapter seven. You see where he's talking about fasting. That when we are fasting, we should anoint our hair. We should not let it be known public. Public that we are fasting. Okay, it is something that is between you and God. So here you have Ezra. Say, I proclaim the fast, and that God seek God's face for direction and he said God was entreated God was entreated and so God protected them guided them and led them safely now talking about Ahava they are they are by the river Ahava the distance from Ahava Ahava is right on the border close by the border of Babylon the distance from that place to Jerusalem is almost about 1680 some 80 miles or 79 miles to approximate it you know or perhaps 27 2700 kilometers that is quite far and they have children with them can you imagine walking all the way to this place and the whole road was fraught with bandits you know wicked folks people who could attack them and here these people they were not armed they don't have any arm and so they, they are only uh, only defense is God. That is they are asking. That's why they are they are seeking God's face, God to lead them and and carry them. And sure enough, God was entreated of them. He carried them safely. My beloved, you and I will live in this wilderness called world, and the world is fraught with so much wickedness. But we thank God for the living God, the God of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is well able to carry us through this wilderness called world. He is able to deliver us from all kinds of things, anything that comes out of us. When you and I seek his face and apply fasting and prayer on a weekly, on a daily, on a monthly, whatever days that you want, but make sure that it is one that you are doing not to advertise, to show yourself as being special than anybody no 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 you are seeking me because you want to know him that I, I can see here Paul that I may know him the fellowship of his suffering and the power of his resurrection you know when you and I endear ourselves to the heart of God and we commit ourselves to the life of fasting and prayer my friend you know the things that God things that you encounter are so great my beloved let us train ourselves in that manner Ezra Ezra has set us up, has shown us an example. The same was with Daniel. If you look at the book of Daniel, Daniel was before God. I'm not talking about when he abstained from, from when he told the king's servants that he was not going, they should serve them only, uh, what do you call it, uh, vegetables. That was not fasting. That was not his mind. He was not fasting. He just said that so that to protect the servants. Because the servant says if they don't eat the their boss, Nebuchadnezzar, will be angry with them. So it's okay, just to avoid that, give me vegetables. So, and sadly, though, that has become the doctrine of some people. Did you love it? Yeah, I'm not talking, I'm talking about the true fast, the fasting. Daniel fasted, you know, no water, no food, you know, for 21 days was before God, to the extent that when the angel came, he was so weak and the angel lifted him up. Because he was so weak and um, that's the kind of fast that is what we call fasting and then jesus christ 40 days and 40 nights with no food no water so true fasting is that kind of fast where we we turn our place upside down it could be one day it could be two days it could be half a day that is if that's what the lord is leading you to but please don't follow after the kind of thing you are they are eating eating and they say well i'm fasting you ask them why what are, what, what, what are you fasting they say yeah i am not eating sweets sweets so i'm fasting when they are eating sandwich and all those things that's not fasting okay that's the abstention they are abstaining from something they are eating okay so let's look at it now having explained that you have you have uh what do you call it uh what do you call it ezra proclaimed a day of fast and god was interested entreated they walked they went all the way to jerusalem and no adversaries attacked them when you and i when you and i apply add to our walk with god fasting my beloved 
you you will not be running to you will not be running after preachers and everything saying pray for me pray for me no 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 god has already given you an either key okay learn how to seek god's face in fasting and in prayer it is it does not matter the magnitude of your the problem that you're going through if we fasting and prayer jesus said this kind cannot come out except through fasting and prayer and god is right there to give you the grace to fast okay the grace to fast pastor pimple i know it by the grace of god because that is part and parcel of my life with christ and i believe if you make that part and parcel of your life with christ the lord would the lord would teach you so much you will not become one who is tossed to and fro by the slate of men okay let us let us emulate ezra daniel when he sought god's face through fasting and prayer god was entreated of him and the lord revealed so much to daniel the same with so many as isaiah elijah all those prophets were not people who were just eating and drinking they were people who really gave themselves to the lord in fasting true fast i'm not talking again about people who are eating they are, you, they are eating grapes and they say they are fasting. They are eating orange, they say they are fasting. They are eating, they say fasting. You ask them, how are you fasting when you are, I see you eating? They say, no, I'm not, I'm not eating a hamburger today. I'm fasting, I'm hamburger fasting. And some, I say, I'm TV fasting. I'm not watching TV, so it's fasting. That's not fasting. Okay, that's not fasting. That's abstention. So don't allow yourself to be deceived. It is, it is a, 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 a strange gospel that is being circulated around making people love food so much that they cannot stay away from food god will give us grace it will give you the grace and my the grace to afflict he said they afflicted themselves with fasting that's what ezra said that we afflict ourselves with through fasting to seek god's face for the direction for us to take and god was entreated of them and god will be entreated of you if you and i Take the same stance my beloved the lord loves you so much he wants you to take hold of the key that he has given to you and i the key fasting and prayer first you have to know jesus make sure you know him make sure he's the lord of your life make sure you are walking daily with him yes then we fasting and prayer at fasting and prayer my friend the study of his word feed your heart let the word of god dwell in you richly my friend if you do this okay if you allow this to be part and parcel of your life, you'll be stable. You will not be tossed to and fro by any strange doctrine. And you will not be amongst a group that run after prophets and apostles and or running after them for seeking signs and wonders or miracles. No, 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 no. No, you will not. You will be established. You know, you will be living in Ephesians chapter 6. It says we war not against. It says uh, our warfare is not kind of but mighty through God. They're pulling down a stronghold, not that. But Ephesians he says that we should. Uh, oh my, 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 my! For we war not against. It's gone, but just read it. I say it's not coming to me. But Ephesians, where say having done all this, stand, taking on the whole armor of God. Okay. The whole armor of God, fasting and prayer is part of it. Fasting, prayer, the feeding of soul of the word of God and all that. The people who have great feats, the people who have great victory, people who live a victorious Christian life have fasting and prayer as part of their life. They don't depend on man. They don't rely on humans. They rely solely on God and God works in their behalf. And God wants to work in your behalf if you take to that kind of lifestyle, okay? Jesus Christ fasted Jesus the Son of God fasted 40 days and 40 nights okay so if Jesus Christ did and he says when I am taken away that is Jesus said if I'm taken away they will fast my disciples will fast okay and when Jesus left they fasted so you and I amen okay I pray and trust that this word has been a blessing to you okay let us seek God's face sincerely and as we do that let us read ourselves of any and everything that is going to be a hindrance 
to our walk with God. And when we yield ourselves to fasting, read the book of Isaiah 58, it will tell you, break the bonds of wickedness and all the things that you and I need to do. And God will do it. And then you'll find yourself always basking with joy. People will be wondering why you're always full of joy. It is because of the presence of God in your life. God bless you. This is Pastor Pimpong. Okay, grace and peace to you. I love you, but there's one who loves you the most. His name is Jesus Christ. He died for you. Okay, love him, serve him. God bless you. Bye-bye.